Good morning, all. My topic is uh, preloaded ozonated and non ozonated IUL and long term effect on glistening and PCO and its impact on visual function. There is considerable controversy exists regarding the extent of impact on visual function due to glistening. Most of the earlier studies have reported that these changes did not influence the visual function. However, contradictory data exists for contrast sensitivity at higher spatial frequencies. The purpose is to evaluate the effect of ozonation in preloaded ozonated system and preloaded non ozonated hydrophobic acrylic intraocular system and its long term effect on glistening PCO and its impact on visual function. This is a prospective study. Patients were randomly divided into two groups, ozonated versus non-ozonated preloaded IUL system. All surgeries were performed by a single experienced surgeon for approximately the same operating time. Any variance was removed. A total of 100 patients, 50 patients in each group was taken for the study. The inclusion criteria were age between 50 to 75, cataract NO1, NC1 to NO2.9 to NC2.9, corneal endothelial count more than 2,000, power of IUL implanted to 20 adapter to 23.5 adapter. The exclusion criteria were poor dilating pupil, keratoconus, general dialysis, glaucoma, any corneal pathology, previous ocular trauma, chronic EVITs, pseudo exfoliation syndrome. The, uh, uh, the uh, model transfer function test was uh, uh, measured by abrometer and the morphological objective PCO estimation was done by anterior segment slit lamp. Photography, retro elimination photographs were used for PCO estimation. Five millimeter of corneal posterior capsule, uh, of central posterior capsule was taken and the individual PCO score was calculated by multiplying the density of opacification by fraction of capsular area involved behind the IOL optic. The main outcome were recorded at seven days, 90 days, and two years respectively. This includes uh, grade of glistening, posterior capsular thickening, post-operative best corrected visual acuity, contrast sensitivity, expressed as modular uh, transfer function in photopic and mesopic condition taken by abrometer. The statistical analysis was done by uh, pair t-test for intra-group and independent t-test for statistical significance of change between the uh, uh, two techniques. The difference of distribution of age is non-significant between the group. The distribution of gender is non-significant between the groups. This is the statistical analysis for glistening at seven days, 90 days, and two years. And it shows significance only at two years uh, and the ozonated group had uh, significantly less glistening at compared to the non-ozonated. This is the best corrected visual acuity graph and it shows that it at the, at the end of two year, the visual acuity was better in ozonated but it was not significantly better. This is the statistical analysis of uh, visual equity mm -hmm. at 790 and two years. You can see that it is 0.9734 in ozonated at two years and 0.9350 in non-ozonated. The higher value of mean shows better equity. And this is the MTF values at five CPD at 790 and two years in photopic condition. It showed no significant. You can see the graph of mean and standard deviation showing the same. This is the at 10 CPD in photopic condition at 790 and two years. Again, it was not significant. You can see the standard deviation and mean graph for the same. And at two years, at 790 and uh, two years, when uh, we did it at higher spatial frequency, that is 15 CPD, it shows significance at two years. And you can see in the graph also, it is showing significance at the two, at two years. So this is in mesopy condition again at five CPD, at seven days, 90 days, two years, again, we found no significance. You can see in the graph also at 10 CPD also and 790 and two years in mesopic condition, there was no significance. You can see in the graph also and in mesopic condition at 790 and two years when we analyze at 15 CPD, we found it is uh, statistically significant at two years. At two years, in the uh, ozonated group had significantly better modular transfer function measured by abrometer. And you can see the mean and standard deviation graph this is a PCO score and uh, we found that uh, at two years post-op four patients in each group had PCO score one and PCO score two was found in two patients in ozonated and three patients in non-ozonated. This is the statistical analysis for YAR capsulotomy. Again, it was more in non-ozonated, but it is not significant. So two years follow-up showed no non-significant decrease in visual equity in the non-ozonated piston type IOL system as compared to the ozonated IOL. However, there was no change at seven and 90 days post-operative follow-up. In our study, two years follow-up showed that glistening significantly increased and contrast sensitivity significantly decreased in non-ozonated uh, uh, system resulting in significant decrease in quality of vision at higher spatial frequency, that is 15 CPD, and thus reducing patient satisfaction. So conclusion is minimizing the incidence of PCO and improving quality <coughs> quality of vision can only be envisaged with higher quality surgery and capsular bag implantation. But the choice of IUL in terms of material design, improved biocompatibility, treated posterior IOL surface for protein adhesion is an overriding element in this quest. 
So take home messages, ozone treated IULs have strong capsular adhesions, hence reducing the risk of PCO formation over a longer duration of time, resulting in significantly better long-term visual acuity at higher spatial frequency. Thank you.